Um, what I'm doing today or focusing on today is um, teaching counters with TPRS. Um, so here in Australia, I am um, the CCLT convener, convener for the Modern Language Teachers Association of Queensland. Um, and yeah. Um, so uh, I thought I'd do a bit of an agenda of how I will structure my um, little I don't know, process today, but um, I don't know. I like to find out about people, their journey, what kind of classes they have um, to have get a bit of an understanding of uh, how they're approaching the whole thing. So um, I'll do a bit of an introduction about myself. Um, then I'll do uh, the Skittle activity um, and I'll explain what that is and I'll, I'll show you how that works. Um, how I, and I'll go through step by step of what that looks like. Um, some additional activities that you could potentially do with that as well. And then questions, but feel free to ask them at any time throughout the presentation. Would rather be interrupted and we sort the question out then than um, wait to the end. So please feel free to uh, interrupt me at any point in time. So um, a little bit, sorry, uh, a little bit about me. Um, I am Bo Pett. Um, so I'm a Japanese teacher at um, Gladstone State High School in Queensland for people not in Australia. That is a um, like a regional area. So a bit of like a country kind of area. Um, I was a bit nervous when I went there about four years ago to start teaching because I wanted to do TPRS and CCLT and have a go at some of those things. But I was concerned that country areas are not going to be wanting anything to do with languages. So um, you'll hear me talk a lot about engagement and things like that is because I found TPRS had the most engagement, drew the students in. Um, and now we have the largest Japanese program um, in the whole of the, the region. So uh, I'm stoked with that. With uh, For four years, we've uh, managed to do um, that and I owe it all to uh, TPRS. Um, so yeah, at university, I did a Bachelor of Education and then um, focused on as well, Bachelor of uh, Japanese and Linguistics. Um, and my language lecturer introduced us to uh, Terry Waltz's book about um, TPRS or teaching TPRS uh, with Chinese characteristics. And that just got me so excited. So um, that's how it all started. Um, the other thing that I was really um, struggling with, and I'm sure there's a lot of, I think that's why a lot of us are here is, um, we, I think there's a big disconnect between, um, what we learn as like teachers, how we should teach a language compared to what research is saying and, um, what linguists are saying spe uh, specifically like Krashen and, um, Bill Van Patten, things like that. Um, and I always had people come up to me and go, oh, I learned a language for seven years. And then I don't remember a single word of it after school. And I went, oh, that, there's something fundamentally wrong with that. There's something not okay with that. Um, so yeah, that's what really um, got me intrigued. And then when I started, my lecturer introduced me to that uh, to TPRS, and then I was like, "That's it. That's the thing." And I saw it connect with linguistics and um, language uh, teaching, and I thought that was perfect. Um, so uh, like, I generally focus in that CCLT realm, so the comprehension-based community of language teaching. Um, so it maximizes comprehension during communicative events, um, the byproduct of which is language acquisition. Okay, so like yeah, TPRS and all that um, fits under the whole um, CCLT um, method. Um, I believe Bill Van Patten's the one championing it a lot for Apple in, um, in America. Um, so yeah, and it's aligning with the second language acquisition um, theories from, ling from linguistics. Um, yeah, some approaches and methods used in comprehension based communicative language teaching. Um, yeah, I don't think we need to go through that because I think Craig, Craig and uh, Nathan covered fantastic amount of that and they did a much better job than I will in this small amount of time. <laughs> um, so um, my ideal situation, so our learning intentions for today, are hopefully my objective is by the end of today, um, they might have some different ways to include counters um, in your approach with Japanese. Um, I'll explain why a little bit later, why that's important, uh, specifically in Australia, because we have to operate under the Australian curriculum, um, where I believe in some uh, states in America, and I'm not, I think Matthew and I've talked about in Canada as well, there's not that rigor or expectation that 
you have to meet certain levels or there are certain things you need to teach and you can't and not teach. Um, so yeah, so calendars are one of those things that we have to teach and it's in the Australian curriculum. Um, so yeah, we'll I'll show a couple of different ways you can include counters, fun activities, um, but again, my students really, they jump in with the engagement and they really get into it. Um, hopefully our success criteria, so when we leave at the end of my little presentation, um, we'll hopefully leave an understanding of three different activities you could potentially use for counters. Um, and um, further some of the engagement and understanding of counters for your students. So um, this is called the Skittles activity. Um, I can't take any credit for this. Some of you may have seen it before. The person who showed me is actually um, on this webinar. So um, I didn't realize that was gonna happen, but that's okay. Um, if she, I, she can take credit for it if she wants to. I left her out purposely, but um, Yes, she can take credit for it if she wants to. Um, but um, she was shown to me by a primary school Japanese teacher from Queensland. Um, and I believe she saw the activity from another teacher in um, England. Um, when I was showing this activity, I just had like a light bulb hit me and I went, that's fantastic. I can see that being so engaging for the students. Um, I can see us having so much fun with that. So um, I really wanted to make sure we, uh, um, had to really want to give that a go and it's and it's progressively grown and changed over time. Um, so some background information um, just so you understand what my the level my students are at. Um, a lot of them are from a low socioeconomic background so that's where the engagement for me comes uh, particularly a uh, part because they're I don't know they they either like something or they don't. And that's about most of the kids that I have. Um, and they're from areas where they don't really leave their hometown. So they've never really seen um, different kinds of people. Um, they've never experienced. We only just got a uh, sushi restaurant in at the start of 2020. Um, so that's the kind of um, students that I'm working with. Um, so the students, um, particularly they've heard different counters through different character creations and also stories that we've made together over the years. I generally do this activity with my year 10s. I have done it with my year eights before. And to make that a little bit clearer, my year eights are about like 13, 14, about 14, I'd say. Um, so I'm not sure what that equals in your home country. Um, and the year 10s are about 16 years of age. Um, so they will have heard some of these before. So there might be some processes that we've skipped over um, because they do actually understand certain things. Um, in Australia, we follow the Australian curriculum. So it's um, offered on a two year band process. So year seven and year eight is together. So by the end of um, year eight, you need to have achieved all this stuff. So that's how we operate in Australia. Um, so that's a direct uh, sentence straight out of the achievement standard. So they need to, in year seven and eight, they have to have an understanding of com uh, common counter classifiers. And there's some examples there. So hito, hiki and sai. Um, and you can change, you can do whatever you want with that because it's um, whatever, it's a, it's a bit vague for a reason. So there is um, a chance for you to interpret that how you want to. Um, in year nine and 10, um, particularly for the unit that I stick this activity in. Um, students ask and respond to questions. Okay, so I get them used to um, that kind of process and they use set phrases, modeled language to make um, arrangements and transact. Um, really easy to do, I think with TPRS, they pick it up super quickly and they can um, produce it um, after a while with no issues because by this stage, if they're in year 10, they've done TPRS for, if they've been in my class, I've done it for year seven, eight, nine, and 10. So they've had four years. Um, and I mainly use these students with um, our year 10 students in our like food or shopping unit. Um, yeah, I know there's some debate about whether you like categorize things into units and whatnot, but anyway, we won't worry about that right now. Um, so step one um, for the process, are people, I'm not sure if people are aware of what Skittles are. Skittles, 
I don't know if I assume, actually, I assume they're not an Australian food, but I assume they come from America. But um, Skittles are just like, they look like M&Ms, um, but they come in a range of different colours and don't have chocolate in them. They've got um, something else in there. But I like them because they come in a range of different colours. So I think there's purple, green, red, orange. And yellow. Yellow, yes. <laughs> Um, so that's what I use. I buy this packet from our local supermarket because they're all individually uh, inside the packets. They're all, they're all individually wrapped. Um, and that will come in port. I'll show you what I mean by that a little bit later, but there's smaller packets inside the bigger packet, um, which makes it a lot easier to use with the students. Um, so I generally get the students in um, so four or five people in groups of um, five to seven. Depends how big my classes are. And also um, depending on like some people's like anxiety or like other determining factors where they want to work by themselves or whether they want to only work in a group of two or something like that. Um, so taking all those things into account. Um, and I run through my rules and expectations for the classroom setup. I'm sure like most of us, we have little like wall cards or or an expectation set up for how I want it to go. But the main rules that I um, always hammer through is just making sure we're listening with the intent to understand. So we're always listening to um, myself, but also to each other um, for this one. And also we're not distracting um, other students or groups because I find sometimes when I get them into little groups, they start, I don't know, kicking someone else's chair or something like that. So just making sure I bring that back towards uh, making sure that they're not doing that either. And lastly, just getting to make sure everyone is having a go at responding. By this stage, they're very confident with responding. Usually in the junior years, I'm not forcing kids to respond, but generally when they've spent four years with me, like if I say, if I'm asking them to respond, everyone's jumping in, everyone's having a good time. So um, there's no issues there. Um, so, what I'll do next is I generally just, uh, I'll draw that table on the whiteboard. My handwriting's not fantastic, so uh, I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'll draw that first section first. So you'll see that I've, um, I've done the first box in black and the next section in blue. Uh, and I'll explain why I've done that in a moment. But um, so I draw the table on the whiteboard, um, list the groups down the side, put the titles up the top, um, like Midori, Orenji, Hirui, things like that. Um, and then obviously it's up to you how much support you want to add with them. So if you want to put the English or the Romaji and things like that, um, you can um, to gauge it for your particular students, your situation. Um, when I hand out the little Skittle packets, um, I just try and make sure they don't squash them. Um, like it, it's really important the activity that they're not squashing them but some kids just like to fiddle and they like squash them so um, things I've learned I've put in here as well so just reminding kids don't squash them or um, don't throw them at each other you know those typical things um, and don't get that don't let them rip any little holes in there because when they when they find out they have to count like have a guess and they have to like pretend have to try and count them and there's all that air in there they try and rip little holes so they can get the best answer um but yeah just to remind them not to uh tear little holes in there either to try and get the best answer so yeah i'll set up my board work like that um and then we fill in all that information as we go so that's um that information wouldn't be there in the beginning um, I did, uh, my hometown had a little bit of like a COVID outbreak, so we didn't get to, I was going to record this and show you the students doing it, but I didn't get a chance. They all left in the last week. So um, yeah, I do apologize for that, but uh, it's the current situation we're all in. Um, playing the game. So the next couple of steps, next, I think step three, step four, step five, we'll just show you how I rotate through and play the whole game and the process. Um, so first I'll ask the class like So how many people are in this oh, in the classroom? Like how many people are there? Um, and we write the total up on the board. Um, so we're getting used to like the counter nin. Most of them are used to that already, like you saw in that year seven and year eight band in the Australian curriculum. They need to know nin 
down there. So they're fairly familiar with that. So we can just start with that right away. Um, and then I write, um, you know, there might be 22 people. So need you, need nin, and I'll write that on the board just so they know. Um, I'll give each group a little bag and I ask like everyone to think about it, um, how many are in there and um, try and have a guess. So they can't open the bag. They want to try and have a guess at how many. So you see them try and like force them up to the top and then go down the bottom. And I get them to pass that around to every group member. Um, so I give them a couple of minutes to do that. Um, and then uh, the next thing I'll ask them is, um, is like, what is the total number? Okay, so what's the total number in the bag? They're giving me a guess at this stage. Okay, it's purely just a guess. So don't um, let any kids stress out that they might not get it. Um, and uh, that's what I'll do for every single group. So I'll ask each group, so I'll say, you know, group one, um, you know, and then group two, and and we're hearing that um, quite often. And then they're responding to me using um, the counter cop um, for small objects. So they're using counter cop for small objects. Um, and depending on, um, I've had in the years where that's brand new information. I've started to introduce cop a little bit um, earlier in year seven and year eight. Um, so the more recent years that hasn't been new information. Um, in the first few years that I had tried this game, it was new information. So I went through that on the board and had that on the board so I could um, point to it or help them with that. Um, yep, and they respond in counter call. Um, I then write all those guesses on the board. So where it is in black, where I've used the black pen, that's all their guesses of um, their goal key um, to the far right. And then um, I get them to individually go through each, um, how many they think they have green or orange or yellow or red. Um, yes, okay. Um, so like I was just saying, um, step four, I then go through and ask them like, how many green um, Skittles do you think they are? And I'll ask that to each individual group. Um, I used to ask, um, I used to just be like group one, how many green ones are there? And then I'd stay there and I'd ask them how many red ones and then I'd stay, say how many um, yellow ones. Uh, but I found that uh, if I was focusing on one group, then the others were just off doing something else. So um, that's when I went, oh, duh, probably should have just asked group one, oh, like how many green for group one, how many green for group two and go through that way. So they're staying um, consistently engaged. Um, and they're hearing the uh, repetition of um, me asking the questions, but also the responses and hearing how to use COP and um, the counters. Um, I fill the board with all their answers. Um, and then the next thing I do is I get um, some paper bowls just from the local supermarket. I get them to pour their Skittle packets in there um, and I get the students to try and count um, their how many skittles they have um, a good reminder to make sure they don't eat the skittles um, because there's always one kid that wants to try to eat them but um, yeah just a reminder because i've had that happen too many times <laughs> um, and at this stage we're going through the same process again so i'll say go on um, this and they'll tell me the total um, now that they have correct evidence or factual evidence. Um, so that will be the blue writing, which I'll show you in a second. Okay. And using that all that same language, again, like asking how many green ones are there and they're giving me the correct um, answer. So at the top of the board, we've got their guesses. The bottom of the board, we've got their um, correct answers that they've found inside their packets. Um, usually after we've done all their guesses, I'll do some circling. Um, Craig and Nathan have inspired me to do some more triangling. So that would be my uh, next thing to uh, include next time or next year. Um, but yeah, that's when I do some of my circling. So work with the data, ask a whole bunch of different questions, um, do some yes, no stuff or or and, um, and doing some things like that. Um, and then I come down to the next section, ask, um, go through all my, um, steps and then by the end of it asking some circling again asking some more questions with the data um, 
depends what classes you've got. I've had classes that are happy to just win. So what I do is there, if there's, um, you'll see on my photo, wherever I've circled, it means they've got the correct answer. So group six um, correctly guessed that they would have two green ones. So I circle that they've got two green ones. Um, and that works with students. If, if you want to give them a prize for guessing it, then that's fantastic. Again, um, like I said, my whole thing is trying to get them engaged uh, um, and staying engaged as much as, as, much as possible. Um, so yeah, if you give rewards, otherwise some kids are just happy with the satisfaction of um, winning. Okay. Um, and then usually just circling again, some um, more questions about the data and going through all that. Um, at first they think it's like, they, go, they look at it and go, oh no, it's math. But then they get really excited that we're working with food. It's a whole bunch of different, <laughs> and while it is math, but we're working with, um, we're doing it in a whole nother language and they have so much fun with it and they um, keep asking to do more. So that's where the additional activities a little bit later, I'll show you came into it. Um, so yeah, that's what um, the board work will look like. So the black is the guesses, blue, uh, the factual evidence. Circles just represent every time they've got, um, if a group guessed correctly. So group four guessed two yellow and there was two yellow. Um, I also make, um, trying to tap into more of that CCLT stuff and listening to BVP when he had um, tea with BVP and talking L2. Um, we're talking about making tasks. So this was like my first iteration of making a task where they're reading, which is still looking at, um, cause I think we know the power of reading with all the TPRS books that we've seen. Um, and the power of reading is a definite uh, key to this whole process as well. Um, and I try to include some of that CCLT stuff making um, some tasks. So what I do is I put all their data into, this is just a, um, a rough version. Usually there's more questions, but it'll just give you um, an idea. Up the top, I'll, um, I've, oh, I didn't put the data of how many people there, but I must have asked them as well. Um, who likes, uh, who really likes Skittles? And 18 people said they really like Skittles. Who likes Skittles? Four people said they like Skittles. Um, who doesn't like Skittles? And zero people said they um, didn't like Skittles. So then what I've done is I've said, none in last Skittles go, um, Daisuke this cut. Um, so ask them a question or written it down and I'll get them to read it and they just answer it themselves. So this is a task that I've made for them. I get them to read through it and I get them to answer all of the questions. Um, so in that situation, which it's a blank box, they'll just write um, uh, Juhachi Nin to 18 people. Um, and then I've asked uh, 13 people dislike Skittles, um, hi or yeah, because it's false or it's not correct, uh, yeah, okay. And you could play around with that with like tabashi if you wanted to, or as mean like correct or not correct if you wanted to, but um, I've just gone with hi, yeah. Um, and then we've got the next, oops, um, the next part we've got group um group guesses um so that original guess stuff and then i ask some more questions down there um so group three no go ke wa ju ikko des um hi yeah so yeah they just work with the evidence um that's presented there and they answer the questions so they're reading the questions having a go at answering them um and again the same process down the bottom with the numbers in the packet so that's our factual evidence um, and we've got group one wa sanko no kiroi skittles ga arimasu. And they've got hai or ie. Okay, and then we've got another one where asking ikutsu. Okay. Um, some additional activities that um, I've done in after this one, I saw the engagement that I was getting from this. Um, cool. I, the kids wanted to um, do some more things. So additional activities I've done is like a chocolate survey. Um, so I buy, again, um, in Australia, they have like more packets of these, uh, but just like for chocolates and there's different amounts in them. So some have eight chocolates in there, others go all the way up to 18 chocolates. Um, so I buy all different packets and I ask them um, how many are in the packet? Um, and they have a guess just by looking at the back of the packet um, and then we have a bit of fun with using the counter cot again. So leading on from the Skittles survey, we've looked at Nin and Cot, and then we're back to looking at Cot again. So recapping it. 
we, we um, have a question though, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Um, uh, someone was just wondering, and they can jump in and correct me if I'm missing something. Um, if during these activities you introduce the difference between um, des and desho, when I guess when they're when they're guessing how many are in it, would you have them say desho? Well, you definitely could. Yes. Um, I haven't I haven't worked too much around this show because it doesn't really come into uh, you definitely could and I suppose in my head I go operate through the Australian curriculum so I'm scanning through everything going uh, um, does that need to be um, in there right now not really it actually the Deshaw comes into like um, year 11 and year 12 curriculum so that's when I focus more on it then there's no issue I could definitely bring it down into the year 10 stuff and ask it because yeah they are making like that um trying to have a guess or something something they're sure definitely and actually I like that more I'll probably make that change next year so there we go <laughs> um uh, are there any other questions Matthew uh feel free to jump in anyone else but that's the only one I noticed there in the chat yeah, so I think you're good to continue. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so some additional activities, a chocolate survey. Um, yeah, I buy five to seven bags of um, different chocolates. Um, we use the counter cot again. I ask them to try and guess how many are in the bag. Um, I also ask how many people are in the classroom. So recapping that counter nin again. Okay. Um, and yeah, I find they get quite, my students get quite competitive. So they try and have a mini game where like there's groups of them where they all think there might be Junico in that bag. And they're like, no, they're like adamant that it's that one and this one. So yeah, it, there's some mini things you can do with it as well. Um, I then move on to like ski and ski deny. So whether they um, like it or dislike it. Um, and I start counting, we go, I ask them the questions like, um, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a common chocolate that everyone has, but I um, mean, anyway, we have like Cadbury chocolates and I go Cadbury chocolate ga ski des ka or Kit Kat ga ski des ka. Um, and then te uh, agate, like put your hand up and then I count how many people um, want it. Again, I put all that data on the board for them to see. Um, and the students always correct each other and make sure everyone's putting their hands up and make sure we have that end total of how many people in the classroom. So I really like that because it keeps the students are keeping it accountable. It's not me having to do all the behavior management, all the engagement checks and all that. They're actually encouraging each other to jump in and trying to make sure that everyone's um, joining in on the actual activity. Um, and again, then I circle just that information. So we go through, we circle it. Um, and then the same process again, I take all that information, turn it into a worksheet and they work through it by reading through it um, and trying to have a go at answering the questions in Japanese. Um, and the last, uh, last additional activity I have um, is the Japanese food survey. Um, a little bit of an odd one, but um, like I was saying before, the area that, in, that I'm in is a low, socio low socioeconomic area. Um, they're six, um, six hours away from the uh, capital city of our state. Um, and they only just got like a sushi train uh, in 2020. So they've never really, they don't get to, a lot of the students don't leave to go to big cities often. Um, most of them have never traveled overseas. So trying to bring in that culture into everything as well. So um, I show them pictures of Japanese food. So it might be like gyudon or okonomiyaki or um, taiyaki or something like that. Um, and I tell the students a little bit about it so they get, uh, they understand that there's a whole bunch of different things and, and people eat different foods and things like that because um, yeah, a lot of them eat literally um, meat and vegetables and that's their staple diet and they've never really experienced anything else. So trying to get them to understand that there's more to the world and society than just that particular thing. Um, so yeah, I get them to, we look at it, I talk about it and then I ask them like, um, do you like it? Or do you think you'd like it? Sorry, I do ask them, do you think you'd like it? Or, um, or do you think it's... Um, or do you not like it? Um, and I also ask them, um, does it is it uh, does it look yummy or does it look um, not yummy? 
Um, so we go through that and, um, and get all that data as well. So again, bringing in a whole bunch of different vocabulary, um, still focusing on like count and min when we're putting all the data up on the board, um, but also bringing in some culture with it and some more engagement that way. Um, and like I said, everything comes back to, we'll circle all that data as well. And I'll put that all into a task and we'll work through um, that process. Am I going for time? Yep. All right, oh, I beat myself. Um, so oh, I finished a little bit earlier than I was expecting, but um, so my contact information. So I am Bo Pet. Um, I, if anyone does want to contact me or if you want any, um, like I know Matthew is going to share the videos and the information, um, but if you need anything else, you have any follow-up questions, that is my um, email address. Um, I do have a mailing list that I um, email out to as well, um, focusing a lot on like the um, stuff happening around the world for CCLT or TPRS or CI. Um, and more recently, I've just made a um, MLTAQ CCLT network um, group uh, just to trying to uh, get more teachers encouraged and involved in um, particularly my state, but also the other states around Australia um, to try and get them keen and inter uh, interested in the whole um, thing. Um, are there any questions? I did time this yesterday and it went for 40 minutes, so I must have spoken way too quickly. <laughs> so the, there was one and there's been a couple of suggestions already made by other people in the chat, but yep. uh, they're asking if you have any suggestions for um, things that you could use for counters other than co. So Skittles and stuff would be co. We've had someone suggest uh, pokey for uh, home or home um, crackers. Yeah, okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, I know. I, I wrote that down too. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah, no, that's a really good idea. Yeah, I think if you to use Pocky, then like, yeah, F upon. Um, I'm trying to think what else you could use. Yeah, my for like flat things. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you could do pizza. And then because I'm pretty sure pizza's counted in my, so you could go through pizza, different pizzas. Um, <laughs> uh, crackers, that, so that, that would work. Too. That would crackers, work. yeah, that'd be a good one. Um, yeah, no, I definitely think you could. And potentially you could do it with like animals as well um have try and figure something you could do with uh animals to include like um hickey vicky um yeah all those kind of things oh we've got a suggestion here skittle color could represent an animal well, then you could Ooh. yeah do you guys have I, animal crackers down there oh oh i don't i don't oh well, my experience no we don't have animal crackers unless some oh. australian wants to uh jump in and suggest that we do but i'm fairly confident we don't have any uh animal crackers or anything yeah, really shaped like animals you know the little animal cookies shaped like okay. animals i just want to jump in if that's okay before the next question yeah. and point out um the same thing happened to me um when giving a presentation like this there's always one or two people asking questions that leads to a suggestion from the group that yeah. helps the presenter um get new ideas and like further improve whatever they're presenting so if any of you out there are kind of on the fence and maybe considering presenting in the future i highly recommend it because chances are after you present you'll you'll get some added ideas on how to improve whatever it is you're presenting no for sure i i like the the suggestion of this sure and now like pocky is like with pod and things like that I'm like, yeah it's fantastic i think that i think that's a big thing is because um I don't know about most of you, but like where I am, like in a regional area, like I'm my own critic, like no one else gets to critique me <laughs> and like doing this, you're like, fantastic. Like, that's a great criticism. I'll take that on board. Um, like I could now make my presentation better or my, for my students, it'll be a better situation. So yeah, no, it's uh, fantastic doing these because yeah, those are perfect um, suggestions of ways to improve it, which I, I'm now I, like, I, I just want to get in there and edit everything. <laughs> I don't know if Sally is from Australia or not, but apparently there are packs of biscuits for various uh, kids cartoons. For example, you can get baby shark packs. So yeah, oh. it looks like there's this whole area here. Um, past, some pasta comes in shapes. Something called tiny oh, yeah. teddies. I, oh, oh, tiny teddies, yeah. <laughs> lots of different yeah, things. Kat, um, Catherine, have you got a question? 
I was just thinking too, as you were talking during the presentation, one thing that came to mind too, with the all the data that you're gathering there, all the mathematical, you know, yeah. how it's turned into a mathematical activity, you know, a box of say crackers or something like that. Um, it could be about guessing how many there are. And if there's 25 students in the class, how many, we can turn it into division and how many <laughs> crackers does each student get? And, you know, yeah, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, no, thank you. I like that too. Nice.